Back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm now going to be answering question number two from this October 2023 paper, um, which is a mechanics paper, M1, from the Edexcel International A-Level Syllabus. Um, and this question here is um, quite a rare one, actually. Acceleration time graph. We normally see velocity or speed time graphs and um, sometimes distance time graphs, but acceleration time graphs are quite rare. Okay, so here we have an acceleration time graph, and it tells us that two fixed points A and B are on a straight horizontal road. The acceleration time graph, bold, put it in bold because it's something that you might not expect to see. Um, in, in figure two, represents the motion of a car traveling along that road as it moves from A to B. At time t equals zero, the car passes through A with speed 80 meters per second. So the velocity at A for the car is 8 meters per second. And at time t equals 20, the car passes through the point B with speed V meters per second. Okay, and we need to find or show that V is equal to 18. Now, one of the interesting things about acceleration time graphs is that basically an acceleration time graph the area under the graph is basically the change in velocity that takes place so for example here we have this car going along it's going along in one direction it's not changing directions it's going along in one direction it's first of all it's going at a certain speed it's decelerating so it's going to go slower first and then it's going to go at a constant velocity for the next you know six seconds after four seconds it won't change its velocity. Acceleration is zero. And then it's going to accelerate. It's going to speed up uniformly at 1.2 meters per second squared until 20 seconds. We've got to show that its speed at 20 seconds is, twin is uh, 18 meters per second. Okay. So now, as I mentioned, the area of this rectangle here, okay, which is, and you take the sign into consideration, it's going to be four times negative 0.5. That's going to give you minus 2. That's telling you that it's going to change its speed by two minus 2 meters per second. Minus 2 meters per second. Its speed is going to drop. So we can say that its velocity at 4 seconds is going to be 8 minus the area of that rectangle, which is 4 times minus 0 0.5, as we worked out, which is going to be 8 minus... Sorry, 8 plus 4 times um, 0.5. It's going to be 8 minus 2, which is going to be 6 meters per second. And the velocity of the car at 10 seconds is going to remain the same. You're going to have 6 plus 0. It's going to be 6 meters per second. So it's going to stay at 6 meters per second because the area under the graph between 4 and 10 is 0. This is, it's not accelerating. It's not decelerating. And then from 10 to 20 seconds... Okay, at 10 seconds, it's going to be going at that speed, of course. By 20 seconds, it's going to have this area, okay, added to its speed. So what's the area here? It's 1.2 times, that, that distance is 10, so it's 12 meters per second. So it's going to increase by 12 meters per second. It's positive, it's above the t-axis, it's a positive area. So it's going to be 12 meters per second. So the velocity of the car at 20 seconds is going to be... 6 plus 12, which is 18 meters per second. Okay, so V is equal to 18 meters per second. That's one way of doing it, using the area under the acceleration time graph. That's one method of doing it. There are other methods as well. Uh, one of them being um, that what we can do is we can use the equations of motion. We can say, okay, between 0 and 4 seconds, we have S, U, V, A, T. We have to split it into three separate sections because acceleration is different in each section. So S, we don't know. The initial speed was 8, T equals 0 seconds. V, the final speed is what we're trying to find for that second after 4, four seconds. Acceleration was minus 1 point, uh, minus, what was it? Minus 0 0.5, sorry, the first part. Okay, minus a half. And this was, time was four seconds. So from this, we can say, we can use, we have V, U, A, and T. So V equals U plus A, T. So V, our four seconds is going to be U, which is eight plus 
um, minus 0 0.5 times 4. It's exactly the same calculation that we have here. That's going to be 8 minus 2, which is 6 meters per second. And then between 4 and 10 seconds, it's going to stay the same. So the velocity at 10 is going to be 6 meters per second. Its acceleration will be the same. And then between 10 and 20 seconds, we have S, U, V, A, and T. We don't know S. U is equal to. Um, now it's going to be equal to 6. V is what we have to find. A is 1.2 and T is 10 seconds. So again, we can use V equals U plus AT. So V equals 6 plus 1.2 times 10. So V equals 6 plus 12. So V equals 18 meters per second. And that's the answer. Okay, so we can do it using SUVAT. We can do it using the area um, between the curve and the T-axis on the acceleration time graph. Both of those methods are basically the same thing. The, the, the equations of motion are based upon you know, the, the, the um, travel graphs anyway. Okay, so there's part A done of this question. Now for part B. It says, sketch a speed time graph for the motion of the car from A to B. Okay, so we, knew, we know that um, from the last part, that from 0 to 4 seconds, the acceleration is minus 1.2 meters per second squared. Between 4 to 10 seconds, the acceleration is 0. And between 10 and 20 seconds, the acceleration is... Sorry, this was minus 0 0.5. Getting mixed up there. That's minus 0 0.5 meters per second. And 10 to 20 seconds is positive 1.2 meters per second squared. Okay, so that's the information that we have from the first part of the um, you know, question. Now we have to sketch the speed time graph. So we're going to make our axes. Now for a speed time graph, uh, a velocity time graph and a speed time graph are interchangeable. They are the same thing if you have an object moving in a straight line without changing direction. Okay, if there's a change in direction, then a speed time graph will not be the same exactly as a velocity time graph. It will be different. In this case, you can use them as like interchangeably. Okay, so that's speed and that's time. So in the beginning, it's going at 8 meters per second. Let's say that's 8 meters per second here. Okay, it's going to decrease its speed, okay, until it reaches 6 meters per second after, as we decided, as we d determined, after 4 seconds. Okay, so we worked out in the first part of the question. So we have here, okay, a straight line joining those two points. Okay, and then it goes for a constant speed for the next, how many seconds? From 4 to 10 seconds, the next 6 seconds. So that will be 10 seconds by the time it's reached there. It's still going at 6 meters per second. And then it increases its speed for the next 10 seconds. Okay, so for the next 10 seconds until it reaches 20 seconds. This doesn't have to be 100% accurate. It's just a sketch. Okay, so it's going to then increase its speed until it gets to 16 meters per second. Let's just draw that over there. Okay, so this represents 16 meters per second. And... There we have our speed time graph. Okay, so I'll just put these bits in to make it more complete. So everything is in the right place. Okay, that's good. So those are the three different sections. Deceleration, constant speed, acceleration. Okay, the values are all there that we need. Okay, and that's the speed time graph for the motion of the car from A to B. That's part B done. Now for part C, it says find the distance AB. Find the distance between A and B. So we know that the distance is found from very easily for a speed time graph by taking the area under the graph. We could use equations of motion as well, okay, which are based upon this. Um, but we want to find the distance. Now we have these shapes which are like not really regular. I mean, the whole, the whole shape is not one regular shape. It's made up of three regular shapes. We have a trapezium. You have a rectangle and you have another trapezium. A lot of people like to split up. Uh, they would maybe make one big rectangle and then two trapeziums. Okay, or, or two, two, you make one big rectangle and then two triangles. You could do that if you want to. That's fine. I like to use trapeziums. That's fine. Uh, whichever way you prefer is good. You could like make a line from here all the way across. And you have this six times 20 and then a half times base times height, and then a half times base times height. That might be quite easy, actually, in this particular case. All right? Uh, in fact, I will go with that. 
I will go with that in this case because this looks like it's even easier in this particular case. Normally, the trapeziums are easier to use, but here we're going to have to have three trapeziums, okay, or two trapeziums and a rectangle. Here we have one rectangle and two triangles, so this seems a bit easier. So I'll go with this. So in fact, I'll, I won't call it one, two, three like this. Okay, I'll call it one all the way across from there to there, and this is two, and this is three. Okay, so the area of one is a big rectangle. Okay, so the area of this first part is going to be six times 20, which is 180. And the area of the second part, which is a small triangle over there, a half times a base times a height. So a half times a base, which is four, times a height, which is from six to eight, two. So that's going to be four. And then the third area is the triangle at the end there. It's going to be a half times a base, so it's a half times 10 times from 6 to 16, that's 10. A half times 10 times 10. That's 18 actually, not 16. Why would I put 16? What am I doing? Sorry, that was 18. For some reason I said 16. Why did I say 16? I'm sure it's 18. Yeah, we have to show it's 18. Okay, excuse me for that, that's 18. Okay, so some of you might have spotted that and already written some comments in the um, comment section. Okay, but uh, I've spotted it before it made any difference because it only makes a difference to this last area here. Okay, so spotted it in time. Okay, so you have a half times 10 times, um, and this is from 6 to 18, which is 12. A half times the base times the height, which is 12. Okay, from 6, this, this is 6 to 18, that's 12 here. And that's 10, that's right, okay. So that's going to give me, um, what's easy to do? It's easy to do this way, 10 times 6, which is 60. So we end up with the total area, okay? So the you can say the distance is going to be the sum of all those things. So you have 180 plus 60, which is 240. So you have 244 meters, okay? Six to, oh, what am I doing? Silly mistakes this morning, but... 120 plus 60, that's 180, 184 meters. I don't know why I wrote that, but that's fine. We spotted it in time, okay? So it's always good to check your work as you're going along. So that's the reason why I've, of course, purposely made those mistakes to make sure that you're awake and to see that you're checking your answers as you're going along, okay? So anyways, you have 184 meters is the total distance. An alternative way of finding the area and that would be by using these two trapeziums and this rectangle and I'm going to show you just to make sure that we've done the right thing seeing as we made the, those silly mistakes uh, we can we can verify our answers correct by doing it in this different way okay just to make sure so we have here these three shapes we have this trapezium okay which I'm going to call trapezium A and then re rectangle, this is B, and this trapezium, which is C. So for trapezium A, now we know the area of a trapezium is given by the distance between the parallel sides divided by two times the sum of the parallel sides. Here, the distance between the parallel sides is four, and the sum of the parallel si sides is eight plus six. So you have four over two. So for A, you have four over two times eight plus six, that's going to give you 2 times 14, which is 28 meters. So that's the area covered in that first section. B is a simple rectangle, 6 times 6, which is going to be 36. So for B, it's 6 times 6, which is equal to 36 meters. And for C, we have another trapezium. Um, the distance between the parallel sides is 10. So you have 10 divided by 2 times 6 plus 18. Okay, so 10 divided by 2 times 6 plus 18, that's going to be 5 times 24, that's a 120. Okay, so we end up with 120 plus 36 plus 28, that's going to give us, um, that's going to be 5 plus 3 is 8, 184 meters, which I think was exactly what we got earlier. Yeah, so it doesn't matter which way you split it up, it's fine. As long as you find the area under the, um, you know, shapes, you could also use the equations of motion. 
okay? You can also use the equations of motion because we know that, um, you know, the formula S equals U plus V over 2 times T tells you the distance traveled. So, for example, you have U is 8, V is 6, and T is 4. This is basically the area of the trapezium, okay? And here you have U plus V will be the same thing, okay? So you'll end up with, you know, a 6 plus 6 over 2, which will be 6 times 6. So this is actually the area of a trapezium, this formula. That's where it comes from. That's how we derive it, actually. Okay, but you could use the formula by themselves if you want without looking at the areas, which is basically essentially the same thing anyway. So anyway, that completes this question here, question number 2. Other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist that will appear over here. Other questions from kinematics of M1 at Excel can be found in the playlist over here. You can find questions particularly relating to travel graph speed and uh, distance and acceleration gra time graphs um, over here in this playlist. And you can subscribe to the channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.